In this video, I fly over to a small airport that I've been doing some flight instruction at for the past several months and demonstrate how I perform landings in an airport environment that has rising terrain and towering trees on the approach end of one of the runways. The U.S. Department of Agriculture reports New Hampshire's tree cover at 89 percent, leaving at best only 11 percent of its land mass unforested and available for possible emergency landing areas for aircraft. As a result, smaller airports in New Hampshire can seem like tiny, barren oases carved out of dense forests comprised of massive white pines, hemlocks, and various deciduous trees that rise up 120 feet or higher into the sky. For pilots, these small New Hampshire airports create some real challenges for safely operating aircraft, and particularly so when it comes to making final approaches and landings. Fine airspeed and altitude control are a must, and staying ahead of the power curve is critical. If you're flying treetop on your final approach and your airspeed suddenly drops off due to a reduction in headwind, you're likely to sink and mush into the trees if you're on the backside of the power curve. If your airspeed is too fast and or you're too high coming in over the trees, then you'll blow by the runway threshold and end up floating so long that you'll either have to go mist or slam into the trees in the far end of the runway if you try to force the landing. To ensure I hit my intended landing zones on these types of short field runways that are nestled into tall, treed forests, I make sure to keep just a little extra airspeed, a few miles per hour or knots over the aircraft's specified short field approach speed, while at the same time dialing down my altitude to the necessary height so that I'm flying just over the trees. Then, when I'm crossing over the last of the trees before the start of the airfield, I reduce my power to idle and adjust the pitch of the aircraft by slightly pulling back on the stick or yoke so I maintain the short field approach speed. This results in effectively taking the escalator down to the runway. As I near the runway, I transition to level flight before rounding out and landing. Sometimes I may briefly add a little extra power during the transition phase of flight to reduce my rate of descent to smooth out the landing, if I feel I have plenty of runway still left to land on. With practice, I try to maintain a slightly higher altitude as I fly over the trees to maintain more safety margin. But to do so, I have to carefully control my airspeed. Again, too slow, I can find myself in the region of reverse command and risk landing short of the runway and too fast, I can find myself having to do a go around. So practice is really necessary in learning how to maintain constant desired airspeed and altitude. So with that, I'm off to fly around the New Hampshire Lakes region and see some of the sights from above. If you found this video helpful, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Also hit the notification bell so that you get notified on my next video.